in Trinidad and Tobago before uh, focusing on the NPTA, the National Parent Teacher Association, and their victory in court just a couple of days ago. I should mention that the Prime Minister is back in Trinidad and Tobago. He returned early this morning from Suriname, where the CARICOM Heads of Government 43rd regular meeting uh, would have been held from Sunday until yesterday. Uh, so he is back in TNT uh, this morning. And, and indeed, uh, lots of issues on the table, and uh, no doubt uh, he, he will pronounce on, on many of them, as he did uh, before his departure. Uh, that would have been on Saturday and uh, elicited quite a bit of reaction with uh, his, his comments then. Uh, so, uh, again, the PM is back in Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, we'll see what come, emanates from that over the course of the day. So let's deal with the NPTA, because they've won in court again, defeating Clarence Mendoza and his A-team in their quest to overturn the NPTA election results. Justice Carol Gobin, presiding in the Port of Spain High Court, uh, has reportedly dismissed an injunction application brought by Mr. Mendoza and his A-team, who filed an injunction seeking to overturn the results. And, uh, those elections were held in April of uh, this year. Well, just to give us some, some context to it all, and, and what does it actually mean about the, about the functioning of the NPTA, we, of course, have someone with the, the legal expertise, attorney at law, Martin George. I'm always tempted when I'm chatting with Martin George to go on to many different issues related to wider governance, uh, but uh, we'll deal primarily with this NPTA issue. We also have with us uh, Kevin David, uh, who's the president of the NPTA, and first by Vice President Zina Ramatali, who I just saw getting up and walking away. I don't know if I said anything to, to, to offend her immediately, but uh, hopefully our guests can hear us uh, loud and clear. But uh, let's, let's see if we could try uh, Mr. Kevin David, uh, first of all. Mr. David, just ensuring that you're hearing us, please. Well, apparently he isn't. Uh, so uh, we'll try to sort, sort uh, those situations out. Um, uh, uh, indeed, let me, let me check with Martin George because just gauging by his reaction as I was watching, watching him uh, uh, on the our Zoom connection, he didn't appear to be hearing us. So, uh, Mr. George, I'm are you there with us? I'm yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, uh, uh, Martin George, uh, there with us as uh, uh, attorney at law representing uh, the NPTA. Just, just give us some some context to this particular issue. What does this represent? Or is there going to be further a further challenge from Clarence Mendoza and his A team in this matter? Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Fazir, and good morning, Zina, and good morning, Kevin, and good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Fazir, what we are witnessing is a scenario of what is known in the legal circles as a serial litigant. There are persons who, um, you know, make themselves, I guess, famous, or in some cases, infamous, by repeatedly bringing court actions. There was a very um, well-known um, person before, um, one by the name of Mr. David Walcott. He's now deceased. And he had a history of bringing a plethora of actions until I think um, Justice of Appeal Gregory Smith had to one day, you know, I mean, chastise him so soundly because all he ended up doing is basically just consuming the court's time in what turned out to be fruitless litigation. And thus far, the history of all these actions brought by Mr. Mendoza, since we have been involved in the matter, they, it has proven the same. It has proven to be fruitless. And I think that's why Justice Carol Gobin yesterday, you know, she took the step, which, you know, I mean, I, I, I commend her for that step of speaking to the parties and saying, hey, listen, instead of wasting time fighting court battles, shouldn't we be focusing our energies on the best interests of the children? Because each time you have an election, you have these legal challenges after the fact. I mean, the elections were held since April. If you legitimately had a grouse with the election, you wouldn't wait till July to then decide you come into court to file a challenge to it. You would have done so since in April when the, when the results were declared. I mean, Mr. Kevin David has been president for almost three months, and you now woke up one morning and decided you wanted to challenge it again, you know, after several failed challenges before. We had, we had to get injunction orders against Mr. Mendoza and his team, where Justice Kevin Ramcharan ordered that they are not to hold themselves out as the NPTA or the NPTA executive. That injunction order was continued by Justice Margaret Mohammed, who then ordered that they are not to hold themselves out or purport to be the executive of the NPTA. I mean, I don't know, maybe 
Zena or Kevin could tell you what is so magical and enticing and attractive. Well, well that is what I want to find out, Martin George. I mean, I, I, I want to find out that. So let me, before we take a break, let me, let me get uh, Mr. <laughs> Kevin David, uh, the, 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 of course, the elected president uh, since, since April of the NPTA. We'll also hear, of course, from the former president, who is now first vice president, Zena Ramatali. But Mr. David, just checking that you're there with us, please. Firstly, Mr. George, Mrs. Ramatali, John Tobago, good morning. I'm, I'm here. I'm here with you. Right. Be be before we take a break, I mean, I mean, what, what do you make? Because I asked you that, that same question at the time with the election and so on, and whether there's going to be any challenge and what, what, what went on at the actual elections process. I mean, are you getting paid a million dollars a month? Are you, do, you, do you drive a Beamer? Um, are there in, incredible perks and privileges to being the president of the NPTA? Um, f for me, uh, what I can tell you is that I have not received a stipend. I have not received any 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 sort of financial anything. What I can tell you is that I may be receiving God's blessings to preserve me to continue through this madness because I mean it's a lot of work, and I feel people are not really committed to actually doing what they're supposed to be doing. I mean, as president, it is extremely difficult for me just to manage my job, my family life, and on top of this, this level of PTA work. So I am I am lost myself. I, I try to sit and, and try to wonder what is it there what is there to to for us to be fighting so much over 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 this. I mean I can't see it being as power because at the end of the day is a voluntary service we, we provide to the nation's children, to our schools, the level of time, the level of interaction, I mean it's is a lot of work. It's just work right down the line. And I mean, really and truly you have to love something like this to be constantly in it. So I am I'm lost. I am really lost that why this is this fight is continuing like this in, in this manner. Okay, so let me bring in Ms. Ramatali before we take that break, just to get get a, a perspective from her because she's been involved uh, with the executive of the NPTA for a very long time, has been the president for a long time, is now first vice president. I, I mean, Ms. Ramatali, Ramatali, do these legal matters actually get in the way? of the NPTA doing its work. Good morning to you. Good morning to you, Fazir, Mr. George, Mr. David, and to Trinidad and Tobago, and those on the World Wide Web. Certainly, it has uh, hindered us. From since 2019, we have been in the court. We, we have been in these, these useless, baseless battles. And it has hindered us severely. Because, you know, yesterday when, the, when the, um, Justice Gobin spoke, uh, it almost brought me to tears because here it is she was making a plea well look look at what is happening look at the SEA results look at COVID look at the impact of the learning loss and here it is adults who some of us are long-standing members are uh, continuing to fight in the court for what the children are the ones who are who have been losing out on advocacy and standing up for them and fighting for our children to get their just due in the education system. So I believe this is so baseless. And I I, tr I poured my heart to these members this morning. Stop this and let us work in the interest and welfare of the children of Trinidad and Tobago. 643 in Trinidad and Tobago. When we come back after the break, we'll try to move the discussion forward because uh, whatever else happened, maybe there's going to be another challenge and another challenge and another challenge. But at the end of the day, one, we, the, the whole issue about the legal process is something we can discuss a bit more uh, with Martin George, but just the issue of the work of the NPTA and the challenges moving forward beyond any other legal challenges is what we're going to focus upon when we come back after the break. But as we go to the break, here's an, an image uh, that has been identified as a beach day in uh, Sweet TNT. Do we have that image that we're going to present now? Let's see if we can put it up before we go to the break. Apparently not. We're having a few little uh, technical issues here. And there. Oh, there we go. Uh, there's the beach day. Now, how many of you remember that? Seeing the beach and just sprinting off to dive into the water. No, no, that, that is what uh, a day at the beach is all about in, in the good old boy and girl days. And, and indeed, for uh, children right now uh, who are enjoying the July-August school vacation. We'll be right back and continuing our discussion. Before we turn to our discussion with our three guests, Attorney uh, at Law Martin Georgia, NPTA uh, President uh, Kevin David and First Vice President Zina Ramatali, uh, just a, a gentle reminder again that Trinidad and Tobago's women were beaten 6 0 
by Canada in their opening game of the CONCACAF Championships. Uh, their next game is against Costa Rica on Friday. Costa Rica won their opening game. This tournament is being played in Mexico. They defeated Panama by three goals to nil. Uh, Mr. George, if, if, I could, if I could start with you and, 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 and you reference this, this tendency by some people, you know, to litigation, litigation, litigation. I mean, uh, from, from your own point of view, I mean, uh, this might be a little diverting from, from the issues with NPTA and so on, but as an attorney at law, as a practicing attorney at law with considerable experience and so on, I mean, uh, it's a job to, 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 to represent these matters, but how do you feel about, about, about things like this? When, 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 as would appear to be the case in, with, with the judgment from, from Justice Gobin, I mean, there, there, there's nothing there. How, how, and, and these matters have to, to take up time and effort and resources when there's serious work to be done by an organization like the NPTA. Yeah, well, the thing is, I mean, the, the only good thing about it is that um, the court has the power to make orders for legal costs to be paid. So at present, we have about five such orders against Mr. Mendoza and his team. So we are in the process of having those processed through the court system. But of course, that again, you know, the interesting thing is even your costs, you have to go and argue for them. So even that is almost like, you know, a litigious process, you know, even to argue for the legal costs. But the point is we have gotten the orders. So of course it's the quantification and having them assessed before they master. So we have those in process. There's one that we presented to Mr. Mendoza already. Um, he has not yet paid on it. Um, we are hopeful that he will do so um, soon. But the fact of the matter is that it's costly and it, it really, at the end of the day, is impinging an impact upon upon the work of an organization such as the NPTA because when you have to be spending time preparing affidavits, giving evidence to attorneys, preparing witness statements, preparing documents, signing, reading over, then reading the affidavits from the other side, then it, you know it really is time that you could devote to your business of dealing with the parent teachers association which is what they ought to be doing so i hope i keep my fingers crossed that this is the end of the road but the fact of the matter is um sometimes you know some people um it takes a longer while for them to get the message and um who knows as you say we we may see more litigation i mean it will be unfortunate but at the end of the day we as attorneys we are prepared to deal with it as we've dealt with all the other matters they brought and i mean we've dealt with them successfully and i mean we will continue to try to do so but the point is if it is that it's a serious issue, we would prefer if the attorneys on the other side would at least contact us, try to have discussions and have some kind of resolution. Because, I mean, this has gone so far as us having to, you know, send copies of the injunction orders to the Ministry of Education so that the Ministry of Education will know that, look, these persons are not to be invited when you have your, um, your meetings because there's an injunction order against them. They have gone so far as to involve in their last two actions, they, they involve um, Republic Bank, you know, as, as a party. You know, and I mean, the attorney for Republic Bank came there and she was like, what are we doing in this? They involved the Ministry of Education. They even sued the Ministry of Education also. That, that's to tell you, I mean, it's, so it's almost like a scattershot type of litigation, you know. You, you're just railing against the world in general because you are upset that you were not elected as president. So anybody and everybody you could attack, it appears that you're attacking. And, and, and Mr. David, just, just put in context for us. Let, let's assume that this matter hopefully would, would be behind the NPTA based on what we are hearing uh, from your, your legal representative, uh, Martin George, with us this morning. But, but again, you never know. What do you see as the priorities of the NPTA right now? You are the, at the helm of, of, of this relatively new executive. Yes, we've got the, the SCA results that will come out, and there's the political toing and froing about who to blame and so on. But from the NPTA's perspective, Mr. David, what is the priority right now? All right, as I indicated before on our last, on our last um, discussion, there are three things we itemize in terms of, of, the, par of the priority of this of this um, tenure, right? And the first thing on that on the agenda was the literacy, right? We intend to address the, the issues related to the literacy problems within our primary and secondary school system. 
followed by the deviant behavior of our students within the school system. In addition to that, hopefully providing a, a handbook when moving forward in terms of, an, of any sort of disaster coming out of, of COVID. So these are the three things we had already identified. And gracefully, we had, we had put things in place um, in, our, in our last general council meeting where we formed various groups and adhere, and where the responsibilities were given for them to go out and, and start working. So these are the things that we are looking at. So these court matters and stuff have created a, a lot of problem for us because I mean, court having a court matter is another thing, but also too, one has to also establish a point that we started without any documentation. There was no handover. There was no any documents that we had to work with. So basically it's almost like starting from scratch. So a simple thing as a terms of reference for our committee had to be drawn up at the last minute because there was no documentation to follow. So all these things that are hampering us from actually moving forward, thank God that, and, and, and our attorneys as well, that we were fortunate enough to get back our property. The landlord was, was very gracious in, in, in doing so, right? We actually have our property right now and we are going through to account to ensure that all our stuff are there. Right. Although we are already established one or two things are missing and we will deal with that in the, in the court as, as time goes on. But these are the issues that are affecting us from actually performing and, and doing our, our job. So the, while some may have time to, to, to go on television and parade themselves and, and talk all that set of nonsense, we are in the back here trying our best to get our feet in the, in, back into the ground and getting stuff done. And, and, and if I could ask Ms. Ramatali, uh, because we're getting very quickly up towards 7 o'clock, yes. how effective, Ms. Ramatali, is the NPTA? I, I ask you that in the context of the enormous challenges that are faced and the prospect that there might be an injunction that being passed under the door right now in your offices or whatever it is, or some, some legal challenge or the other. But, but again, from my own limited experience as a parent at one time, you go to a PTA meeting, it turns out to be a confrontation between some parent who feel he or she is a legal luminary, and maybe the principal get vexed with the way that they're talking to him, or a teacher get vexed, and you get nothing done at the end of the day. How effective is the NPTA? Fazir, the NPTA, is 62 years old. We have an act of parliament, 18 of 1976. So we have been around from since 1960. Indeed, we are, we, we are on the ground. We are working in the trenches. As a matter of fact, we look forward to meeting with the Minister of Education on the 22nd of July. And as our president pointed out, we're going to be putting our issues and our concerns on the table as how we can collaborate with the Ministry of Education to bring back the relevance of our organization. All during COVID, our membership, our, our regions have been meeting on, on, on various platforms, you know, encouraging our members to stay on board because we are seeking the interest and welfare of children. When the, the judge spoke about the SEA results and 9,000, over 9,000, students scoring under 50 percent that is a great concern to the national parent teacher association and as our president said we must focus on numeracy and literacy skills in our school system we have to look at how the content is being taught what is happening what role parents can play there's a different role for parents now it is not just about going to a school being on a pt and raising funds only it is about the holistic development of our children it is about decision making it's about volunteering learning at home and working as equal partners with our school administrators to ensure that this education and this impact of learning loss that we are able to help our children to recover and and mr david before you go back to mr george for a, for a final perspective are, are you bracing for another legal challenge to something or the other or, or, or maybe some some issues about property or some issues about things that missing and so on are you going to be spending more time in the courthouse than dealing with NPA, npta matters still well as i as i will indicate once again i have a team i have a team of, of people we have um split the team up in terms of who is responsible for those court matters i'm the president and i have to lead this npta through these um 
to be um try, trying times yes it is very challenging it is a mental it affects one's mental um capacity to perform as a president within this role but i have a I have a very good team and that is where the focus is i am focusing as the president to lead and ensure that things are things get done whatever comes we have a very good at, attorney attorney at law they will deal with those those matters and stuff our our business is dealing with our two children and the parents of the nation that is where my concern lies any court matters anything comes again we have attorneys to deal with that okay right yes it may be yes we may have to spend some time to give information provide information but that is what we will do okay mr george uh, let me leave the final word with you after getting uh, big up uh, by your client uh just just, the, just i mean are you satisfied one we, we've talked regularly about the legal system and the process in this particular case are you satisfied that this was dealt in as expeditious a manner as possible? Because everybody has the right to ac access to the courts, whether it be trivial, whether it be frivolous, whether it be serious, whether it be substantive and so on. Are you satisfied that this was dealt with in as expeditious a manner as possible? Yes, Padir. And I think that is the reason why we've seen such a plethora of you know um, repeated lawsuits because the courts have been actually extremely efficient justice gobin justice margaret mohammed we've also had justice kevin ramcharan so i mean he, he he's taken a tour of the judges it looks like you know but um they've each you know been very consistent and very firm and decisive in dealing with the matters and i mean at the end of the day you always give everybody a hearing regardless of the merits or demerits of their case but once they can go no further in terms of that particular action, then the court will do what is necessary and dismiss the matter and dismiss it with legal costs. There's just one other legal issue I want to touch upon for you. Very quickly, the yes, NBTA go ahead. The NBTA was incorporated by Act of Parliament, and this is the only official body known and recognized as such. They unfortunately last january we discovered through our research and our investigations they went and registered with the company's registry a parallel organization bearing a very similar name so there is the potential for much confusion and obfuscation out there in the national um you know school parent teacher body because you have a parallel organization with a very similar name which they have registered it's something that we are hoping when we speak with the attorneys that they will voluntarily seek to have it struck off the company's registry otherwise it's something we now will have to take up as a legal issue because you can't have the two organizations going ahead when this is the official organization incorporated by an act of parliament so there's no other NPTA, but this one. Martin George, Zina Ramatali, and of course the president of uh, the organization, Kevin David, want to thank you very much for taking the time uh, to be with us uh, this morning. It's just a, a, a touch after 7 o'clock in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's now go to the news.